On the phone with us now is Father Brent Kuzik, Presbyter of St. George's Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Dauphin. The, the theme of, of the program this week is the way that spirituality and, and religion can positively impact our health. But just taking a step back and even more generally, what is the value of having a church like yours in the community and, and for a, a place for people to convene in their faith, in their spirituality? Matt, the the church has always stood as a symbol not only of faith but of strength and the social impetus to uh, to seek something, find something that is extremely important in life that goes beyond the physical. So for the past two thousand years, uh, the church has stood not only as a physical symbol but that spiritual symbol. We're engaged each and every day in the physical realm. We're engaged with wanting to um, seek uh, shelters, seek food, seek, um, seek work and, and, and relevance within society. But then there's a component of spirituality that, that we also seek because of the reaction we have within our material and physical uh, society and, and physical work. So that always stands as, as that beacon. So let's say that uh, there is a problem at work. Let's say that you have run into um, an extreme problem that you you couldn't deal with. Uh, the church is always there as that beacon uh, to to find resolve from that for that problem, to find uh, solace, to find uh, answers on on how to move forward, uh, etc. So that is is the purpose of the, of the church in all aspects of of our lives. Um, and that is why the church puts uh, not only parameters, but also allows us um, allows us to uh, to filter what is, is is spiritually important within uh, all aspects of our lives. So we're, whether it is marriage relationships, relationships between uh, fathers, mothers, and, and children, um, with coworkers, with with everyone. And then, uh, obviously, the answers to the greatest enemy that we have, the greatest spiritual enemy that we have, and that is the whole topic of of death. Um, So there are answers and support systems in the Church for all of that. Obviously, going to the Church, being a part of the religious community, a great way to promote and nurture one's spiritual health. I think we all have an innate desire to tend to that spiritual health. I think oftentimes a lot of folks, uh, you know, I'll lump myself into that, perhaps live a life that maybe alienates us slightly from, you know, the, the, the depth of spiritual well-being that we would like to achieve. So in what ways is spiritual health kind of promoted, addressed through the religious p- participation at, you know, St. George Parish, for example, and what is the value to the the larger scope of our health? By taking care of our spiritual health, uh, what kind of impacts does that have on our overall uh, well-being? This is going to be a long answer to, to a shorter question, because you are very right. Uh, I think all of society is, is lumped into that very category that you just uh, ascribed to. Um, so we within society... Um, created last in in creation. We are created as rational beings. So we have an ability to see and and become aware, not only of our surroundings, but of ourselves through our surroundings. And that rationality, that awareness, and the rationality that we, we carry because of that awareness can also become the consciousness of the of the world and we can become the world's consciousness. So what I mean by that is that we affect through our our efforts in, in life, our efforts with, with other people, within um, relationships especially, because everything boils down to a relationship. Uh, as I said before, there can be a relationship between teacher and, and student, between husband and wife, child and parent, etc., co-workers. So the spiritual health that is needed and and the spiritual depth of awareness uh morality uh understanding that that is needed and rationality that is needed um, is is found in in the practice of 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 your spiritual faith so having said that spirituality cannot exist outside of religion 
because spirituality, if, if someone were to describe spirituality, they couldn't just from the ether grab something um, that maybe is a good feeling or a conscious um, mystery, mysterian uh, within their, their lives and describe it as, as being spiritual. Uh, spirituality has definitions. Spirituality has has parameters. There are uh, spiritual laws that um, that are greater and, and beyond our even understanding that we attest to, that we grow into, uh, that need to be practiced. So having said all that, um, your spiritual health means that you take all of the uh, components of uh, positive thinking, positive relationships, even the, the negative uh, experiences, negative relationships, and you understand them. You become aware of them. You, you know how to deal with them, know how to, to control them. And that is uh, in the reflection of and in the shadow of the two laws of the, of the church, a loving your God who is greater, um, more... Um, uh, more powerful, more um, complete than than you are, and second of all, hinged upon that love of God, loving your neighbor as yourself. So you learn to, uh, as a steward in society, deal with the other person who may have, let's say, offended you, may have, uh, maybe doesn't doesn't like you, uh, or or what have you, uh, and you learn how to deal with him or her out of love and deal with that that very relationship, uh, thereby building not only the world uh, and the consciousness of the world, but building the, the society at, at large. Case in point is um, discrimination today. Uh, uh, all of us are, are different, uh, different nationalities, different backgrounds, different experiences, different ages. How do we deal with that? Well, the parameters of, of, of a good spiritual life Within the parameters of a good spiritual life, you learn how uh, not only to accept, but how to love those people for who they are, um, and and understand also how you can be a brother or a sister uh, in this society and that relationship to them, and vice versa. Father Brent, uh, I'm interested to hear you weigh in on this point. I think right now, those of us who had a pre-established, maybe religious participation, uh, uh, that's kind of been upended by the pandemic situation. The usual way of of gathering, congregating, and and I I guess that almost you could call it the spiritual religious routine that we've come to rely on, that's been pulled away. So what is your suggestion for how people are Manitobans are, are best meant to stay connected to their spirituality, to their faith at a time like this? Ah, I think within the great pause that has taken place in, in our world, I think we can do that uh, actually very well. North American society has, since probably, you know, World War II, the Korean conflict, uh, Vietnam, maybe Afghanistan, um, has enjoyed a relative peace. We have uh, been given uh, a reprieve from 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 fighting spiritually, fighting against an an enemy. And now, the enemy of of COVID, the the reality of our own mortality, the reality of death, has has now sprung forward. Um, it has caused us to pause. It has caused us to uh, not be able to congregate because obviously congregating in our churches in our uh, religious institutions is extremely important. Uh, People contact is extremely important for that mental, spiritual uh, health, which obviously affects the body as as well. Uh, Now that we're not able to do that, the pause can be a positive thing, because now we can retract from the world, we can deal with all of the important issues within our lives that maybe haven't been dealt with in in a while, uh, our own relationships, uh, etc., and we can pray over them. Uh, There is a, let's say within the monastic Orthodox world, there is a, a joy within spiritual silence where you can take reprieve from the world, take a pause from the world, dive deep into your own being, your own self. Um, and as I said earlier, the, the, the whole concept of, of awareness, self-awareness, you can become aware of who you are. 
what you are, um, what your purpose is, what your meaning is, and where you're going. So this is actually uh, doing good for us. We can now uh, stay at home. We can now be with our families, reconnect with families. We can pray together within our own households with families. We can use social media. We can use radio because those who are, are hearing um, maybe all of, of your segments within, uh, you know, within this, uh, this radio program um, can also find clues on how to reach out to people and how to work on, the, on themselves as well. So both are uh, uh, not only needed, but both are a reality right now under COVID, even if we can't gather physically together. When we do gather physically together in the, in the future, it will be extremely joyous, and we will have learned something, and that is, um, that is the quality uh, of, of our being together, our worshiping together, our praying together, our camaraderie together. Father Brent, you've been very generous sharing uh, your insight and sharing your time with us here on uh, Health, Wellness, and You. Can you, uh, if you have any parting words, I'll submit this one final question. Do you have any other thoughts on the manner in which uh, faith and spirituality can be uh, used and turned to at this time to manage some of the negative emotions that we're dealing with, which, as we've learned earlier this week, you know, some of these negative emotions actually can have a, uh, you know, not just a a mental distress, but uh, interfere with your immune system response, with having stress hormones kind of interfering with, with the optimal functioning. So any closing thoughts on maintaining health? Health and, and you know using spirituality, religion as a vehicle, as a tool uh, to that end. Yes, Matt, and I, I believe you're you're very right. COVID nineteen has upset our whole world, but when we look beyond, uh, you know the the uh, result of the of the virus, which can be death. When we look beyond death itself, then we understand that there is hope. Uh, we will get through this, and I and I mean that uh, uh, very strictly. We can't run from COVID. We can't run from grief. We can't run from hopelessness. Um, we have to deal with it. So when we deal with it, we run right through the middle of the whole pandemic. We right through. We run through the middle of all of our fears, our anxieties, our grief, our hopelessness. We not only deal with them within our own beings, we deal with them with, with others who are, who are uh, journeying on, that, on, that, uh, on a similar path. We deal with it together, and we will not only get through it, we have to work ourselves through it. We can't run from it. Um, that will, will only, um, the only purpose of running from it is, is going to be ingraining fear and hopelessness within our, our minds, bodies, and souls. When we run through it, um, see the, the light at the, at the other side and, uh, and, and run through this together, we will have a more positive outlook. We will have a more defined um, desire to, to get through this together, and it will be joyous at the, other, at the other end. We will have health of mind, body, and soul. And that is indeed what we, what we search for in this life.